Hi, my name is Paul Ross, and I'm a product manager with Esri's ArcGIS Online team. This video is an overview of a new feature coming to ArcGIS Online in December of this year called User Types. The goal of this video is to explain what user types are and show you how they're administered within the software. At the end, I'll provide you with some additional resources if you have questions or want more information. WebGIS enables you to connect people, locations, and data using interactive maps created with ArcGIS. You can work with smart, data-driven styles and intuitive analysis tools that deliver location intelligence. You can then share your insights with the world or specific groups. Now, it's your users of ArcGIS that are able to do all this for your organization, and it's user types that provide them with the capabilities and apps they'll need to do their work. A user type is their identity, the capabilities they have with the software and the apps that they can use. Different capabilities and app combinations define a user type. So prior to our December update of ArcGIS Online, you have two user types, level ones and level twos. Those capabilities stay the same even in December, except that we've aligned them with a new and more descriptive name. Level one will be called a viewer and a level two will be called a creator. You won't need to do anything. The name change will be seamless and people in your organization will have the capabilities they had before the update. What is new is that the update will add three more user types, giving you flexible options. This is something many organizations have been asking for. With three new user types, you can match the way your team works with the capabilities and applications that they have access to. User types are a combination of identity, capabilities and apps that align with the needs of the members in your organization. They're the building blocks that allow you to match team members with the capabilities and apps they need to complete their work. Let's take a look at each user type. The first two you already have and are really familiar with. A creator can create maps and apps, share maps with your team or the public, collaborate with team members, administrate users and content. A viewer can view your team's private maps and applications that are shared with them. So both of these should sound really familiar to you since they're already part of your subscription. In fact, the change to user types for current members of your organization won't be noticed. The capabilities are exactly the same. Now after December, there'll be three additional user types available, an editor, a field worker, and a GIS professional. An editor has the capability of a viewer but can additionally edit existing data and add new data. A field worker adds data collection capabilities and apps to what the editor can do. And then the GIS professional adds ArcGIS Pro to the creator user type. So it's pretty easy. Level one becomes a viewer, level two is a creator, and you have three other options as you add more people to your organization. Each user type also includes the apps needed for their work. As you can see in the diagram, everyone gets a set of essential apps. The field worker also gets a bundle of field apps. A creator also gets the office bundle. And the GIS professional gets all that plus ArcGIS Pro. Now, should you wish to add additional apps, that's also flexible. And you can match these to your organization's capabilities with any of the apps in ArcGIS. Now, let's take a look at how you'll see this in ArcGIS online after the December update. User type descriptions are integrated into the software. They determine a member's basic apps and the scope of privileges that can be assigned to the member. In ArcGIS Online, you'll be able to see what apps are included in each user type. For example, here we see the apps that are included with the creator user type, the Essentials App Bundle, the Field Apps Bundle, the Office Bundle. Each of the other user types are clearly described in the software as well. At the top, you can also see how many of this user type you have assigned, in my case, six, and how many are available that I've purchased. There's 94 that I can actually use. In this example, I'm showing creator, which as you can see, we've noted in the user interface as being called a level one prior to the update. This will really help make the name change seamless. The capabilities of each user type are different you'll need the right capabilities to use some of the ArcGIS apps. For example, to use an add-on app such as Insights, your user type capabilities would need to support that. And it's easy to see this in the software. You can reference the compatible add-on apps in the user interface. 
shown here for the creator user type. Roles and custom roles don't change. They can still be applied and work as before. Some organizations define custom roles that further define a user type by adding or removing capabilities. You can also see which of these roles are compatible with the user type, just like what apps are compatible. I'm showing the creator user type here, and you can see which of the included or custom roles could be used with this type in my organization. We've made the new roles fully integrated into the workflow for adding additional people. We've also improved this workflow overall with a more streamlined experience. So let's walk through the process and highlight the improvements. First, you'll choose the flexible options for inviting members. There's no change here. The next step, if you don't just use a file to load all this information, is to provide the user information. And as you can see, that now includes the user type. That user type list will be for the ones that you have available and have purchased. The workflow now includes assigning any additional licenses for other apps as well. This removes that in its additional step and can be done right up front. Credits can also be allocated during the invitation process, as well as the assignment of groups. Then finally, the remaining user settings can be completed and the process is really one unified workflow. Now, the member information area for your organization also gets updated with some new capabilities. You can, of course, see the new user types, updated level 1s called viewers and level 2s called creators. Nothing for you to do in the update. We'll take care of that. On the far right, you can also see that we've added some new, faster ways to manage licenses, user types, items, credits, groups, and the user's profile or just enabling Esri access. On the left, you can use the filters to view each of the user type or role to more quickly find the person you want to work with. The last area that gets updated with user types is the organizational overview. There'll be two additional panels showing a summary of the members by user type and another with licenses for any software you've added on. Both have quick links for managing the user type or license assignments to make this really easy. So that's a quick overview of what user types are and how you'll see them in our December update. For more details, we have a great blog entitled Introducing User Types, and we have more in the upcoming weeks with additional aspects of this. If you want to see and work with user types, we would also invite you to apply and participate in the Esri Early Adopter Program at the link above. Thanks very much for watching.